Nigel, another fine day's work. What's your analysis of that 2-0 win? Uh, a little bit iffy early on, first 10-15 minutes. I didn't think we started uh, as brightly as Grimsby did. And Christy Pym made two or three very, very important saves early in the game. But as the game wore on, I thought we really grew into it, uh, and second half especially. Uh, how we haven't scored more goals, I'm not quite sure. Uh, combination of everything, uh, good saves, blocks, poor finishing at times, uh, but certainly to, to have 30 odd shots uh, in a game and only get the two goals. We couldn't do any more in terms of our attacking intent. Uh, we just need better finishing. But a bit lucky with the first goal, but I thought the second goal was obviously the pick and uh, ultimately won us the game. Yeah, looking at the game in a bit more detail, they perhaps started the better but did that first goal from Davis Keeler done settle your boys down? Yeah, it did. I think, you know, full house here. Everyone's a little bit nervous. No reason to be. Uh, and we were just a little bit sluggish um, out of the blocks. Uh, didn't sense danger enough in the first half as well. Uh, and you, you ride your luck and the goalie makes two or three good saves and you build on that from there. But it would have been different if we'd have been chasing the game. So I'm glad we weren't because uh, it's another very important clean sheet. In and around that period... You had Christy Pym to thank. He made a, a string, two or three really good stops. He's in tremendous form. Yeah, he is. Uh, that's one of the reasons we've got what, 10 clean sheets now in, in 22 league games without the, the, the dubious penalty at uh, Crawley. Could even be, you know, 11, 50% of the game. So uh, he's, he's, I think the whole team are happy with him back, never mind just the back four. The whole team are happy to have him behind, uh, behind them in the game. Uh, and they know that the odd time, he's got a fair chance of keeping it out with his feet, as he did today, I think, once or twice. Uh, his handling's been good, his distribution was good. Uh, second half, he was largely a spectator. Um, and I think it was their goalkeeper that probably took the plaudits. Well, he produced Cartwright uh, a week's work, seemingly, in 45 second half minutes, didn't he? Yeah, you know, we've, well, we've played 50 odd minutes and, you know, we've, we must have had well over 20 shots in that time. Uh, and as the game opened up, as the longer it went, you just want that third goal. Uh, you know, I, I don't think the game was in danger, uh, but our play deserved it uh, and our intent deserved it. And also, absolutely brilliant crowd sold out in the home end would have been nice to send them away with three or four goals but we, we tried even in even in the last second when they were going to take the corner short you know we said throw it in there and we nearly scored from that as well uh, I think four or five have hit him today the goalie as well he's made some good saves but four or five have hit him just rewinding the clock and closing on that uh, that first half you entered the break 2-0 ahead uh, with the last kick of the first period really a fabulous strike from 25 yards by George Maris arrowing into the bottom corner how important was the timing of the goal? Well, you go in and I think it's demoralising for the opposition and it gives us a huge lift. You know, when we haven't been absolutely brilliant in the first half to get him in that 2-0 lead and then you think, come on, second half, let's take it on, which we did. Uh, but we're a bit, I think there was a stoppage just right around the 45-minute mark because the fourth said there's going to be three minutes and then there was another stoppage and they upped it to four. And I think George just scored into that fourth minute, which was a nice timing for us. Did that goal inject further confidence into your players and conversely, not the wind out of Grimsby's sails? Yeah, definitely, because then you go out second half and you can the back four can say, right, we want a clean sheet and we're keeping that. Come on forwards, go and get us another goal. And I say they're all full backs are joining in. Jordan's bombing forward and Stephen McLaughlin, but you know the two centre halves can really sort of say, right, our job now is and Christy, our job is a clean sheet. And they, and they did that again and especially in the second half I think I'm not sure Christy had much of a save in the second half uh, and with our, some of our play we got in numerous times better finishing more than anything Yeah the second half I mean you've described it in great detail the, the chances that Mansfield have created um, could that be the, the most prolific second half attacking display under you without scoring? Yeah, without scoring, certainly. I think we were against Stockport earlier this season. We did similar, uh, but without, without getting a goal, they have 20-odd shots without actually getting a goal. Uh, I think if the third one had gone in, then it, we, we take it on, but we just couldn't quite get it. But well, at the same time, you look after your clean sheet. What was at the top of the chances charts in that second half, would you say? I don't know. But honestly, I'd have to look back over them. There was that many, uh, you know. I think, I think we were just offside. The one that we did put in the net, I think uh, Swanee was just offside. Uh, but they went to ev almost every player in the, the front few had chances um, you know, to, to get a goal from set plays. We, we looked dangerous and we just, couldn't, we just couldn't quite make it. You must be so encouraged, though, by the amount that you're taking because inevitably 
you're going to put some of those away surely oh, definitely if we weren't creating and at times in the last few games we haven't been created anywhere near as many as that um, but let's just keep saying to the players the most important thing is the, the clean sheet and the three points uh, just keep doing that however the performance today load of shots only got the two goals at Sutton I must have had what a quarter of the shots same two goals same clean sheet uh, the results are all that matter just the one change at the start of play. Lewis Reed coming back in for Ollie Clark. Did Ollie Clark need a bit of a rest? Yeah, yeah. After playing uh, Saturday the whole game, uh, and then he's back in contention. We'll uh, we'll have a look at the uh, the team, see how they look on Thursday in training, uh, and see if anybody needs a breather. Callum Johnson's obviously uh, going to be fresh, having only had 45 minutes. Mac has only had 45. Uh, so so we'll, we'll see how people are feeling, especially on the back of those who played Saturday and today. So far, so good in the Christmas period. Yeah, can't ask for any more. Best Christmas present, you know, you can keep everything else and all that. Uh, best Christmas present, three points on Boxing Day. As a, as in, when you're in football, that's all, that's all you want, that's all you can ask for. And uh, you open your present, a few presents on Christmas Day and you're just hoping they're all nice and everything, but the, the thing you really want is the win on the 24 hours later. Thank you, well done. Thanks.